Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the latest edition of Wow Lynch Wow, dedicated to filmmaker David Lynch and inspired by the triumphant return of Twin Peaks. A friendly warning to everyone who isn't caught up on all seven episodes of the new season of Twin Peaks. There will be spoilers, and they will begin in just a moment. So viewers and listeners, be warned. For more than 25 years, Twin Peaks fans were stuck with this entirely unsatisfying cliffhanger ending for Special Agent Dale Cooper. Seeing our hero's doppelganger, possessed by Bob, roaming free in Twin Peaks was a horrifying sight to behold. And worse yet, that was the last we ever saw of him until very recently. Through the first seven parts, we know a few things about Cooper's doppelganger. For starters, we know he is still somehow connected to Bob, but Bob's image seems a bit dimmer and more distant. Bad Coop himself wasn't certain that Bob was still with him until he saw his own reflection. This suggests some type of symbiotic relationship of sorts between these two entities where they appear more loosely connected than was originally the case. Or perhaps they are more deeply intertwined. But whatever it is, the relationship definitely seems to have evolved in some way. We also know that Doppelkoop was the last individual who saw Major Briggs alive. We are led to believe that Bad Coop had something to do with the extremely unusual circumstances surrounding the Major's death. And we can also assume that this somehow ties into Bad Coop's plan that involved the manufacture of Dougie, which in turn was somehow part of his greater plan to avoid returning to the Lodge. This makes the entire Briggs mystery a very curious matter indeed. Additionally, while we don't know this for sure, it is now being strongly suggested that Bad Coop is a serial rapist. This shouldn't come as much of a surprise, especially given what we already know about Leland Palmer during his time as Bob's host. On this front, we are clearly being led to believe that Bad Coop did something horrible to Diane, and it's strongly implied that he sexually assaulted and violated her. And then based on Doc Hayward's account to Sheriff Frank Truman, we are also led to believe that Cooper may have possibly done something heinous to our dearest Audrey while she was in a coma at intensive care. If Bad Coop did indeed plant his demon seed in our beloved Audrey's garden, then there is a good chance that Audrey would never suspect Cooper as the father. In fact, if we take what she said to John Justin Wheeler before they entered the plane at face value, then Audrey lost her virginity on that plane with Wheeler. If this is true, and she subsequently had a baby, then surely she would naturally suspect that Wheeler is the child's father. It will ultimately be interesting to learn how Audrey fits into everything. I think the pieces are now in place that we should see her fairly soon. It's been hinted that when Jade mailed the keys, they would soon reach Ben, and in turn, word would ultimately reach Audrey. There have been some really interesting fan theories going around, suggesting that Audrey is actually the woman in the wheelchair named Linda, the woman who was mentioned by Carl's buddy on the ride into town. The idea behind it being that Audrey is in hiding, and that this would fit in nicely with what the Giants said about Linda and Richard, two birds with one stone. But if this theory has any merit, it probably means Ben is uncertain of Audrey's whereabouts. Otherwise, why is she waiting six months on the government providing a wheelchair when Ben still seems to be pretty well off? Anyway... As soon as Beverly gave Ben the old keys from room 315, Ben immediately remembered that this was the same room where Agent Cooper was shot. It also reminded him of why Cooper was there, 
and this recalled the events surrounding Laura Palmer's murder. As we know, these same events surrounding Laura Palmer have already been a hot topic at the Twin Peaks Sheriff's Department. And now the aftermath of those past events are beginning to resurface and resonate elsewhere in Twin Peaks. In fact, it seems like a variety of unknown powerful forces are all once again beginning to converge on the town of Twin Peaks. It appeared to me that there were several instances of this in Part 7. First was Jerry Horn. Now I'm under the impression that Jerry is no stranger to being high as a kite and chilling out in the woods. So I have no doubt that whatever happened to Jerry, that he was in a very well-baked state of mind. But you still get the impression that something more was going on here and that being toasted only amplified whatever exactly it was that he experienced. Then there's the mist creeping among the trees as Andy awaits for the truck owner. Vintage Twin Peaks music was playing, and the owner never shows up for the 4.30 meeting. We're given a glimpse of an open door at his house before Andy finally gives up and leaves. But this entire sequence had a very eerie, traditional Twin Peaks vibe where it feels like the forces of the woods are slowly awakening. We also had the mysterious humming noise in the Great Northern that Ben and Beverly were curiously investigating. They had a difficult time finding the exact source of the sound, which seemed to me to be roaming freely throughout the room. Beverly mentioned that the mysterious humming sound began some time last week, but she thinks it's louder now perhaps suggesting increased momentum from the inevitable brewing storm in Twin Peaks. And finally, we had the bizarre situation at the Double R, where the guy came in asking for Billy. These are the customers we see on this side of the Double R, right before the guy enters asking for Billy. And when the guy comes in asking for Billy, these are the customers we see this time. On the other side, these are the customers we see when the guy first enters, just before asking if anyone saw Billy. And then these are the customers we see after he has already left. So looking at this sequence again, you can see that some people are different, some people are the same, some people are in different spots, and something very strange happened here and I'm not positive, but I think whatever happened appeared to confuse poor Shelley. Something is definitely going on in Twin Peaks, ladies and gentlemen. And I, for one, think David Lynch made a bold and brilliant decision by focusing on things outside of Twin Peaks during the earlier parts of the story. The way I see it, the whole town is becoming reawakened by something both strange and wonderful. And I absolutely cannot wait to find out what happens next. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Please share your thoughts in the comments section and have a great night everyone.